Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's little foray into some Year 8 Maths Online graphs. Really good to see you. Now, I'm Darren Maths Guru, and this lesson we're going to look at understanding what a line graph is, how to read line graphs, know what a line graph is to show continuous data, and know how to read travel graphs, which is pretty much why you're watching. Well, you would hope that's why you're watching. I'm going to start in just a moment, but if you are new to my channel, can you do me the massivest of favours? Obviously, this is maths, not English. There is a red arrow appearing over there that asks you to subscribe, and I would be deeply, deeply, deeply grateful if you would do just that and subscribe. I'm a little person doing a big job. That's just me doing these videos and hopefully making you better at maths. Now, line graphs in maths are freaking awesome. We use them all the time. And I can guarantee you if there's an exam, there will be a line graph on there because it tests all sorts of maths. Now, this particular series of videos for year eight, we've been dealing with all sorts of stuff, numerical data, discrete data, categorical data, continuous data. We've looked at mean, median, mode and range and all sorts of different graphs that we can use to show all of this data. Now, the last lesson I recorded, which was yesterday, was on pie charts, which is a little bit out of sequence, but pie charts are freaking awesome. I sort of said that they were my favorite graph, which is a bit weird as a maths teacher, because why would I have a favorite graph? But I suppose my second favorite would be these line graphs. Now, I want you to look at these two graphs here. We've got two graphs, room A and room B. And I want you to sort of ask yourself the question, what does each graph show you? As you look at that graph and say, well, what do you think it's showing you? Uh, why would we need two graphs? What do you think the two graphs are there for? What are the blue dots show us? Because obviously on my graph here, there are some blue dots and there are some red lines. Why are some of them blue dots and some of them red lines? Can we describe in words? Because sadly, math isn't just about numbers and writing down equations. Oftentimes, we have to be able to actually describe in sentences like English, oh, shut up, what it is the graphs are actually doing. Can we read values from the graph? Can we, if the question said, what was the temperature in room B at one and a half hours, can we actually read off what that value is? And what do you notice was the variable that was replaced or put on the x-axis? Now, all of these questions are actually really, really important line graphs. So if we actually look at this, what does each graph show you? Well, number one, it seems to be showing me the time against temperature. Now, the, a, a word of warning about the time here, it says time in hours. That does not mean one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. What it means is I've walked into a room at some point in the day, could be 10 o'clock at night. The second I've walked into that room, I've measured the temperature and that's at time zero. After one hour, I've walked back into the room. I may have stayed in the room, who knows? I've walked back in the room and I've measured the temperature again. So after one hour, it's 30 degrees for room B. So it's very important to know what the scale on the bottom is actually showing me. And likewise, on the vertical axis, the y-axis, we have this temperature, which is measured in degrees Celsius or degrees centigrade, depending on where it is you're watching this. So obviously the two graphs are showing us a change in temperature in two different rooms, tick. Why would we need two graphs? Well, we want to compare them. Sometimes it's interesting to know uh, what's happening in different rooms. Imagine you were doing an experiment where you needed heat in one room and cold in another. We'd use two graphs to help us compare. The big one here is what are those two, uh, the blue dots here show us? Well, when I've walked into that room every hour or on the hour, I've actually physically taken my thermometer or I've taken some sort of temperature scale and I've read the specific value. So each of these blue dots are where I've taken an actual measurement. That's really, really important. I've actually taken a measurement. But what about these red lines? Well, I am not gonna sit in that room and every one second take the temperature. Oh, it's 30.4. Oh, it's 29.8. Oh, it's 29.7. Oh, it's 29.6. So what we do is we take a best guess at what we think has happened to the temperature between each point I've actually taken a measurement, yeah? And that's literally it. I've measured the, uh, the temperature at time one, I've measured the temperature at time two, and then I draw a line between them, hoping that's what the temperature's been. Now, me being me, zooming in a little bit, when I walk into a room that's got some sort of temperature control, I have a bit of a laugh. <laughs> I grab it, I turn it up, I turn it down. So actually what might really have happened if I'd got hold of the temperature scale was that. But we don't know that. 
right? We don't know that, you know, Maths Guru is going to be in every single classroom. So actually, as it turns out, we draw straight lines between each of those dots to say, well, that's what we think has happened in each of those rooms. Can we describe what is happening for each graph? Well, I should hope so. If we look at the graph uh, room A, what it seems is that the temperature seems to be dropping and dropping and dropping until about two hours. Something obviously changes to then mean the temperature goes up and up and up. Now, if you can hear some background noise at the moment, I'm sorry, it's absolutely hammering it down here in Victoria, Melbourne. And so if it's being picked up as background noise, really sorry, not very much I can do about it. If we look at room B, what seems to be happening? Well, as I've walked in, it's 20 degrees. It seems to be getting hotter in this room for the first hour, and then something seems to be changing to allow the temperature to cool back down again. And I'm fairly sure you would know what would happen. What, what, could, uh, what could cause change in temperature in a room? What about if I had an aircon unit? What about if I had the aircon unit on in the first room until two hours and I turn it off, and then it is off, in room B and then I turn it on to cool things down. Yes? Can we read values from these things? Well, I'm going to do that in just a moment. Now, what's really, really important about line graphs is that they show continuous numerical data. That's why we have those red lines, because we know that temperature doesn't just stop. Yes, you walk into a room and it's 20 degrees, walk in an hour later, it's 25 degrees, it's gradually got warmer. It's gone through all of the different temperatures. It's not like suddenly we just jump a degree, which is a bit weird really, because here in Melbourne, literally we can walk out in the morning, it's 35 degrees, walk out in the afternoon, it's 20 degrees. Like today, for example, pouring down with rain. Okay, so we measure the dots and we make a best estimate for the stuff with the blue lines. Now, one of the important things about uh, line graphs is that time normally goes on the horizontal axis, okay? Time is something we can't change. Now, I know that when I told this to my group, they went, yes, they can, because I can change the time on my watch. That's very different. That's your time. But time goes on. So normally that goes on the bottom, and everything else goes up the vertical axis. Okay? So how do I draw a line graph? This is probably the most important stuff, and it is so easy, it's awesome. Now, the first thing is I'm going to do a bit of further maths. When you get to year 11 and year 12, you're going to have to start using learning even more random terms. What does that mean? Well, first things first, the x-axis has a different name as well, and it's called the exoplanetary. Do you see what I did there? Exoplanetary. So that we know it goes on the x-axis, the exoplanetary. And up the side goes the response variable. Now, you don't need to know that for year 7. You don't need to know that for year 8 or year 9. Maybe year 10, I don't know. But it doesn't hurt to know that the explanatory variable, the one that you cannot change, always goes on the bottom here. We used to call it in the United Kingdom uh, the independent and the dependent. All right, So independent, again, something that you can't change. And we can't change time. So if you have science, they'll get very excited and try and tell you about stuff going on the bottom axis that you can't change and just goes forward regardless. And as I say, time is one of those. Time is my independent axis. And all the other things will depend on time. So if you think about temperature, as our time goes on, our temperature changes. Our temperature changes as a result of time. Now, it doesn't mean that time is changing temperature. It just means that time and temperature are that way around on my x and y axis. So let's have a go at actually drawing one of these wonderful, wonderful line graphs. Let's zoom it in or zoom it out so we can fit all of that on. This example has been taken from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, and thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use their textbooks uh, and their questions. Greatly, greatly appreciated. You guys are awesome. So we have an example here. So obviously, like I've said earlier, we've walked into some sort of a room. Now, in this time, it says 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 12 a.m., and 1 p.m. And we've measured the temperature at those times. We don't know what the time uh, temperature is between those, but we've measured those temperatures at that time. Present this as a line graph. Now, the first thing's first. My graphing software here absolutely does not help. That gap that you can see should not be there, but I could not, for love nor money, get my graphing software to not put that little mark. When you draw your graphs, you will quite literally have temperature up the side, you will have time along the bottom, and you will start here at 9 a.m. Okay, so you won't have that gap, but I couldn't get my graphing software to do that, so fingers crossed, just remember, don't put the gap. 
So we now look at the first value. At 9 a.m. it was 10 degrees Celsius. There's 9 a.m. and there is my 10 degrees Celsius. Now I've put a cross because in maths we tend to put crosses, not little dots and circles. So there is my first one. At 10 a.m. I was 15 degrees. So I do a little kiss at 15 degrees. Yes, it looks like a kiss because that's what I put at the bottom of my cards for my mum and dad. 11, it's 20 degrees. At 12, it's 23 degrees. Now we need to be very careful that we know what the scale is. And we know that we have this here is 20, that's 25, and there are five little gaps between them, which means each of those gaps stands for one degree. So that's okay, so each of those little box stands for one degree. So at 12, I'm gonna put across at 23. And at one, I'm gonna put across at 18. And lo and behold, there are my crosses. Now what do I do? Well, because I know that it's continuous data, temperature goes up and down and up and down, it's got all the points in between, I now connect those crosses together. Now I'm gonna change color to make it easier for you to see. You don't actually have to do that. On your graphs, you can just continue in pencil and join them all together. But drawing nice straight lines between each of those points, and lo and behold, there is my line graph. Very exciting. Then undoubtedly the question will ask you to do something to read from your line graph. So here, hello nurse, use the graph to estimate. Now it's estimate because again, don't forget Mr. Smith could be messing around with the uh, remote control. The room temperature at 12.30 p.m. Okay, so zooming in on this graph, just to make it easier for you guys to see, what it's asking me now to do is find 12.30 on my graph. Hello, now, where is 12.30? Actually, as it tends to be, it's smack bang in the middle here. And again, don't be tricked. Lots of people would think it was this little mark here. It isn't. 12.30 is halfway between 12 and 1, and that's the point. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a dotted line up. Now, the reason I'm going to draw the dotted line up is because, like the old game of Snake, which I don't think you guys would even know, you would go up to the line and then across. So what we're gonna do is we've gone up to the line and now I'm gonna read across to see what temperature this comes to. And as it seems to be halfway between 20 and that first little tick, that first little mark, we now know that the temperature is going to be 20.5 degrees Celsius. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, there's nothing more complicated about it than that. I, I, I'm generally, generally serious. Those are line graphs. The one that tends to throw people are travel graphs. And here, again, we have an example from Cambridge that is a travel graph. So, again, to be able to answer questions in maths about any type of graph, you've got to understand what it's showing. And this is one of those examples. So, let me see. On the bottom, we've got time. Okay, time on the bottom. Good. Up the side, we seem to have distance. So, this time, we're dealing with a journey, and maybe getting in my car, I'm going on my push bike, I don't know, I'm walking somewhere. So it's got some sort of a journey. So let's look at the questions that could be asked. What does the graph show me? What can I, can I describe what is happening? How are time and distance related? Where did I start from? Where did I go to? How long did it take me? How far away was the place I was visiting? Did I stop at any time? And that's the biggest trick here. Everyone gets so confused about places I stop. And did I go the same speed for my whole journey? Okay, so let's have a look at this then. So what does the graph show me? It shows me that I'm going on a journey. I am starting here and I am ending here. All right, that's all I know from that graph at this moment in time. Can I describe what is happening? Well, yes, I'm going on a journey. I'm starting. It seems to take me five hours. It seems to be that when I've got to where I need to go, it's 30 kilometers away. Well, automatically I'm not gonna be walking because I cannot walk 30 kilometers in five hours. I, I couldn't walk 30 kilometers ever, I'd collapse. Uh, how are time and distance related? Well, as time increases, so does my distance increase. Where did I start from? Well, actually I started from here, but in my head I can go, well, I started from home. Where did I go to? Well, somewhere that was 30 kilometers away, maybe my grandmother's, maybe my friend, I don't know, maybe a party, maybe I was going on holiday. How long did the journey take me? Well, we already know that, it's five hours, because that's where the dot sits. Uh, how far away was it? 30 kilometers, do you see what I mean? It's going on and on and on. Now, did I stop at any time? This is the trick one. Now, when you've stopped, you don't go any further distance, obviously. You know, you've stopped, you're not gonna get any closer to where you're going, and you're not gonna get any closer to where you've come from. And straight lines, that little section there, that horizontal line, 
tells me I have stopped. Whoop whoop. And did I go the same speed for my whole journey? Well, speed, believe it or not, is gradient of straight lines. So for a distance time graph, we're looking at the slopiness. Now, I know some of you guys won't have done slopiness yet. You won't have done gradient. And I'm just going to rub this out to make it a bit clearer. But imagine you are on a bike and you see a hill. Which type of hill would you want to go up? One like that, one like that, one like that, or one like that? Well, I don't know about you, but if I had a hill that went like that, I wouldn't even bother. I'd just look at it and go, <laughs> nah, not traveling. And not on a bike. How would you go vertically up? Anyway. That one, yes please. But obviously, as my line gets steeper, yes, it means that things are actually going faster. And how do we know that? Well, look at this section of line here. Look at this first section of line here. How long did it take me to travel between those two blue points? One hour. How far did I travel? I traveled 15 kilometers. So in that one hour, I traveled 15 kilometers. Now look at this second section here. All right, looking at this triangle a bit from my start to my end, how long did it take me? It took me three hours. And how many kilometers did I travel? I traveled 15 kilometers. So I must have been going faster in this first section. So the steeper the line, the faster I go. And again, we can now use, you know, questions from Cambridge very much related to that. Once we've understood what the graph is showing us, we can answer the question. So, how far did the cyclist travel in total? Well, we know that now. We know it's 30 kilometers because I just read it off the graph. That top point there is at 30 kilometers. How far did the cyclist travel in the first hour? Well, here is my first hour. So, we read off that point there and we know that it was 15 kilometers. What is happening in the second hour? We've got this. We know that because horizontal lines on distance time graphs tell us that we have stopped. And it's all, it's fine. You can say I'm stopped. You can say I'm stationary. Long word. When is the cyclist traveling the fastest? We've got this. The fastest is the steepest. And so the steepest is in the first hour. And in the fifth hour, how far does the cyclist travel? Well, now this is the only trick. So zooming in, we're looking for the fifth hour. So that's between hour number four and hour number five. So we have to look at this point here and say, well, how far was he on the fourth hour? He was at 25 kilometers. How far was he on the fifth hour? He was 30 kilometers. And so 30 minus 25 means in that fifth hour, he must have traveled five kilometers. And they say maths is hard. Ha! I laugh at this. Barry, we no better. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, the whole point of this is knowing what the axes stand for and being able to read the graph. If you can look at the graph first and try and work it out in your head before you even answer any questions, you will have this sus. Now I am going to zip to the other side of the screen. Hello, welcome. I'm going to grow bigger because this is the end of this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it's been helpful. It's all been online graphs. As you know, very excited, right? My second favorite graph. Now, if you haven't already done so, do me the honor, please, of subscribing. And over there is a circle just appearing that when you click, you can subscribe. If you've already subscribed, there are, of course, more videos for you to watch and learn from. It has been really good seeing you. Thank you so much for dropping by. I look forward to seeing you next time. Mouse Guru, out.